Australia, right around the country on Foxtel's Aurora. And on YouTube, this is The Scene. It's all about great Australian and West Australian music. Well, thanks for mate at Atomic and Morley Sound Centre as well. My name is Blake Williams. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching us on YouTube as well, hit that subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode of the show. And I cannot believe we are halfway through season seven of The Scene, which is absolutely crazy. In a few days time, we're gonna announce our end of season rap concert, all the details, the artists that are playing, where we're doing it, when you see it online, mate, Make sure you grab some tickets last year. Uh, last season we sold out. Fantastic night. Hopefully you can join us for our season seven end of season rap party. Tonight though, I'm so excited. It's all about a little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of hillbilly. It is rockabilly in the studio. Let's go crazy for the Rough Houses on the scene. <laughs> everybody how good were they well done everyone well done and I'm so excited as well because we try and book different things in so you know every week you've got a different style uh, rockabilly which is you know something we have not had on this show before and I'm so glad that there's a rockabilly band in Perth that are sounding as, as great as you guys are so well done uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I think so good. Um, rockabilly though so yes. let's get have a brief history lesson of rockabilly uh, 1950s right yeah, that would be about right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like the at the point where country and rock and roll sort of came together, um, and uh, so you had people that were were working in you know like bluegrass and like really traditional country, and then picking up little moments of rock and roll, and you know just a, a great little uh, melding of styles to to give us rockabilly. So, what separates rockabilly from like bluegrass or country or? Similar things that were happening at that time. Is there something identifiably rockabilly? It's a bit rougher. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a bit, okay. it's a bit dirtier. It's a bit more rock and roll. You know, like uh, those early guys, like um, Elvis Presley or Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins. <laughs> Carl Perkins. Um, <laughs> that, um, they get $10 every time they say Carl Perkins. So they're up to 30 bucks now. Yeah. This episode's costing us money. <laughs> um, but they, you know, they define the style. They, they, they sort of took those elements from traditional country and, and really dirtied it up. You've got to remember that in the early days, that Elvis was um, 
was quite uh, obscene with his actions, yep. and it was all a bit uh, thrusting. The th so much thrusting. This is what Jason's going to do all interviews, <laughs> just much. special comments, one line at a time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's where we are. Uh, well, so what attracted you and everybody to this style? Is it the kind of rough and readiness of it? It's a lot of fun, right? Two and a half minutes at a time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fun. Yeah, quick song. It's yeah? brutal. It's, 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 it's hard. It, everybody goes really hard in that two and a half minutes. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Because the energy is up there the whole time, right? Yeah. And you can put all the other elements of the country and the blues and the rock and it, it can kind of move in between those a little bit to make it interesting, I guess, instead of just having that same all, all the gigs. So yeah. It's fun. It's a really fun genre. Well, I, I get that vibe as well. And the gigs that you guys play are a lot of fun. We're going to have another uh, live song at the end of this interview as well. But you got into this a while ago, right? Like, you know, sort of. 2000 or so. Yeah, yeah, not in 1950, but... Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, um, we, we had a, I, you know, we had a mate who was playing in a rockabilly band and I used to go and see him do shows and stuff and eventually he said, do you want to do a fill-in? And I went, I know nothing about the genre, really. Yeah. Um, learned a bunch of stuff and I think eventually Jason and I put something together and then, um, you know, as a sideline to the band that, that we've all played in together, um, we just kind of went... Streety, buy an upright bass. I bought a double bass. Yeah, just Had you it. ever played before a double bass before this point? I fell in love with the blue, um, Oh Brother We're Out Thou movie. Loved the double bass and the music in that, and so I bought a double bass, so this all timed out beautifully. Yeah, yeah right. And I still was haven't it? played any bluegrass. <laughs> yeah. Was it a big learning curve going from electric but double bass? Uh, yeah, and... it's a totally different monster. Yeah. yeah it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the thing, you're, it's, it's, struggle. In, we it's hate intense each other. <laughs> all the time. And standing up as well, playing drums. Yeah. I was watching how you were doing that. I mean, it, it, your ankles must get sore, right? Yeah, my physio's making, <laughs> yeah, making yeah, yeah. a lot of money out of me at the moment. Yeah. Yep. Well, is, it, is that a stylistic thing in the way that it's played to stand up, or is that like an aesthetic thing? We, uh, there was a couple of things. Um, so Slim Jim Phantom from the Stray Cats plays standing up. Um, also, if you're the lead singer, which I am, it sort of seemed a bit silly to be the only person sitting down. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Phil Collins got away with it for a very long time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there was also the grab the mic and go for a wander type thing. Yeah. Um, not quite as easy with this, but... Um, not in a three-piece thing. So yeah, no. yeah. Um, mm. And I'd done some gigs where I'd tried standing up and playing, and I went, oh, it kind of works. You know, if you've got a skinny stage, it, it works fine. Um, and I also di just didn't want to be that guy where... Um, people see you at a gig and go, who's singing? Oh, oh, it's that guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, in the back. Yeah, oh. sure. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. but it, it looks really cool. I think that's the yeah. first thing that people go, oh, that's a bit different. I haven't seen a drummer standing up before. Yeah. It's great. And, it, you know, I guess the vibe for gigs as well, because you're, you're playing around the place. Where do you play in Perth, actually? Uh, mostly in Streety's Garage. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping one day to do a gig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this might be amazing. Um, we've done some really great shows at Alabama Song. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah. Some love some fans. in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's the Chicken Wire gig, right? Yes. That is the Chicken Wire gig, yes. Um, is that for your protection or theirs? <laughs> It tends to be a little bit for both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending on the but, night. But um, they look really vibey, those gigs as they well. They are. They're great gigs. They've been really good to us um, as a venue, and hopefully in return, we've been good to them as well. Yeah. So. What's the blue? Uh, what's the um, rockabilly scene like in Perth? Uh, is there a lot of it? Yeah, it's. Um, well, you know, like it's. I, I feel like it's in a little bit of an ebb at the moment. Um, the Mustang Bar is still a great venue for local rockabilly, and there's little pockets of it and stuff. Mm. You see, we'll, we'll be doing a gig, and there'll be a lot of young people. Um, rock up at the gig and go, I've never heard this style of music. And then in the back you'll see there's a bunch of leather jackets with the big quiffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're all <laughs> making sure that we're actually hitting our notes and stuff. But, um, we're also yeah. not tra traditional, traditional rockabilly, though, which is sometimes not for everybody's taste. If we go too far one way, you can get... You can sort of, mm. you know, we probably should have shaved yeah. if we were doing very traditional rockabilly. Yeah. 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 That, that ship has sailed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the hat, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like the countryside of rockabilly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, you guys, I mean, it's not just playing the, the classics. Uh, you, you're writing stuff as well. And, of course, that's what you did there. And another song coming up in a few moments as well. Yeah. Uh, how do you write these songs, though? Do you have to transport yourself to rockabilly mindset? Or do you write about modern life? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like these songs are very of a certain era, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that with a sensibility in mind about... Um, 
about uh, the subject matter, but something will just drop in. Um, Life's a drag. I was thinking about that play on last year was a particularly wonderful year around the world. <laughs> I don't know what um, you're talking about. And then I thought about it in terms of drag racing, um, and it just kind of lent itself to it, you know? Uh, lots of songs about cars and girls and the traditional sort yeah. of stuff, and just a bit of wordplay, you know? And then once yeah. you take those very basic things to the guys and go, it's going to be two and a half minutes, just like play your hearts out, yeah. um, that's kind of the song, you know? But what's the next uh, tune you're going to do for us? The next track we're going to do is My Bonneville, which okay. is a song I wrote about my motorbike. Yeah. Um, a love it, song, basically. Yes, yeah. yes, it is a love song. <laughs> it's a love triangle between me, my motorbike and my wife. Yeah, yeah, it gets complicated. <laughs> yeah, I started writing the song when I owned the motorbike and I finished it when I no longer owned the motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> That gives you a two-minute song. That's, yeah. that's a lot. Okay. That's right. A lot can change. Um, but you also press this onto vinyl as yeah, well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, vinyl is a rabbit hole that I haven't gone down yet. And I, it's funny, my wife, who's here, did buy me a record player for Christmas three years ago. I still don't have it. Uh, she's like, I'll get you one when we have some money. Um, but, I, but I'm just worried that if I go to the vinyl thing, I'm just going to go rebuy everything I've already got because it sounds so good on vinyl. Yeah. Did you put your stuff on vinyl for that reason? Because you hear different things in there? What do you reckon? It was kind of, part of it was the gimmick. You um, a cool business card as well. Like, hey, you yeah. take this home. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's, yeah, it doesn't fit in your wallet necessarily. But yeah. to, to be able to have that little 45, the way that people used to take away a rockabilly song, it's got one song on one side, one song on the other. Um, was a nice little thing to be able to do. So It's great. Yeah. Are they still available for purchase? Yeah, I think we've got a, a handful left. We only printed a very small run. It was a, a, a hand, hand lathed. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. This guy in Melbourne does a, um, a short run type of thing. So um, it was nice, like a little, you know, nice thing to do. Absolutely. We'll put the details uh, on screen at the end of the interview. But there's a few gigs coming up as well over the next few weeks. Yep. Um, everything is staying the course in terms of COVID land. Uh, WA Guitar Festival in Margaret River in October. What are you guys doing down there? Playing out in a, in a, um, a caravan park, I believe. It's, it's a park there and it's a wonderful family vibe and picture trees and gravel and things like that. It's just going to be great. And uh, Luke Gallagher's playing before us, I think, as well. Yeah. So that's going to be fantastic. Uh, the Warncliffe Mill? So That's it's called it. yeah. Ho Down at the Ho Down at the Mill. Okay. It is. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and it, the whole festival just on guitar bands, is it? Pretty good. No, it's well. a bit of um, everything. There's a lot of ukuleles and um, yeah, little guitars. Well, they are little. They are little <laughs> guitars. <laughs> Tiny guitars. Yeah. yeah. Um, little guitars. Yeah, there's lots of great um, workshops and instrumentation mm. and things like that. It's a really, okay. Really great festival. Yeah. Beautiful. The details will be on the screen. What is the website for all the info? Stringsattachedfestival.com.au. And for your stuff. Um, have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I actually knew. I knew in the back of my mind when I asked that question. That if, you, if you Google us, <laughs> I mean, work it out for yourself, guys. I know. Come on, <laughs> on the computer machines. Yes, yes exactly. You, Google it. Mm. you can Google they on there. They didn't that. have computers in the fifties, so <laughs> being, we're very traditional. Very method. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll find the info and we'll make sure that it's on screen exactly. right now. <laughs> uh, but in the studio, give it up for the Rough Houses, everybody. <laughs> Love the sound, I love what they do, love the vibe. We're going to take a very short break right here on Foxtel around Australia. When we return, the Rough Houses live on the scene. Catch you in a moment. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, the Rough Houses. Mate, so good. That is the album. You can pick it up now. We did check. It is the Rough Houses online. You can find them next week on the show. Mr. Mitchell Martin. Oh. We haven't had this on the show before. What's that, everybody? I love that one half of the audience is doing it with the other time. You know what? One more tune. Let's finish the show. One more song. Ah. It's a scene first. Let's do it. The Rough Houses, live. See you next week. Son, don't carry around your regret. Now I'm not thinking about tomorrow. Those problems haven't turned up yet. Well, I woke up this morning. I still got yesterday's blue. Well, I woke up this morning. I still got yesterday's blue. Now I'm not thinking about tomorrow. A whole new trouble to walk into Well, I know you won't believe me From a telepath of lies Tell everyone who listens How every night you cry Now, sweetheart, you are